My name is Ichabod Crane. <gasps> Welcome to the 21st century, Mr. Crane. Hey YouTubers, it's Charlie. I thought I'd do a review of the first episode of Sleepy Hollow, as well as talk about my next giveaway app coming up. First things first, free stuff. Everyone loves free stuff. So when I hit 25,000 subscribers on my channel, I'll be giving away a bunch of Sherlock brand tees. Reach around here. This is what they look like. They're actually really, really cool. So I'll be giving away those for free. I'll announce that in a special giveaway video that I'll post later this week. Now let's talk a little bit about Sleepy Hollow. It's the new genre cop drama from Roberto Orsai and Alex Kurtzman. Since this is a brand new series, but it's based on existing mythology, I'll talk a little bit about the setup and then just talk about my thoughts about the episode. So Sleepy Hollow, obviously based on the legend of Sleepy Hollow, which involves a lot of spectral, ghostly, and supernatural elements like witchcraft. The series is also kind of married to the Book of Revelations and the idea of the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse. There's also a little bit of time travel, but the conceit behind that is basically witchcraft. So whether you've seen the Disney version or the Johnny Depp version of Sleepy Hollow, this basically takes all those characters and then kind of marries it with a lot of larger themes. So now, instead of just being the Headless Horseman, that character is basically the physical avatar of death, the Horseman of the Apocalypse. He's basically trying to find his head, and if he does, then the other three horsemen will rise and the biblical apocalypse will come. So obviously Ichabod and Abby are trying to stop that. The Ichabod Crane character's role in this is a little bit mysterious. In the Johnny Depp version of the story, he was basically like a researcher that kind of helped solve the mystery behind the witchcraft. But in this version, he doesn't really have the inside track on the witchcraft mythology that a lot of the other characters seem to have, the supporting characters. So during the episode, we also find out that there are covens of witches, good covens and bad covens. So obviously they'll play a role in the series going forward. But we find out that the time travel mechanism is basically a result of witchcraft done by Ichabod Crane's wife in the past. He basically kind of serves as this exposition tool to explain what the apocalypse is, what the horsemen are doing, and what Ichabod has to do to stop it. So since this is a pilot episode, there are a lot of other characters too that are explaining things to kind of set up what this series is going to be about and the path it's going to follow. Another one of those characters you may have recognized is Clancy Brown, as well as John Cho from Star Trek. So Clancy Brown has been in a bunch of voiceover work, but he was also in HBO's Carnival, which is kind of this very similar light side versus dark side story. Only he played an evil character, which is why I thought it was a really awesome moment in the beginning in the diner whenever he went up to the reverend and just kind of gave him a nod and said, hello, reverend. It was basically kind of acknowledging his own brother Justin character from Carnival. In that story, he basically would have been like the headless horseman, like the incarnation of death. But in this version of the story, obviously it doesn't look like he survives the pilot, so I'm not expecting him to be on the show, at least maybe only as a voiceover, because he does have that really awesome voiceover at the end, and he has all this research that he's done on these witches and these mysterious happenings that he gives to Abby, basically. I'm guessing that he's kind of going to be Abby's spirit guide, just like Ichabod's wife is his spirit guide. I really love the John Cho left turn in this story. Obviously, no one ever expected him to be evil. I think it's really interesting that he kind of sets up the idea of this devil character. I don't know if it's the devil, but it kind of makes it seem that way just because of the horns and the hooves and this really like kind of misshapen human-like form. Obviously, it's going to take several more episodes before we learn about that character, but I think that John Cho is really just a servant of one of these dark covens that's trying to bring about the apocalypse. Wouldn't it have been funny if his cameo would have turned into this hilarious Harold and Kumar story? Overall, I give the episode a B plus. I really like genre mythology, so it wasn't really hard for me to make the jump from Book of Revelations to witchcraft to time travel. I totally buy into all that stuff, even though it's a little bit ridiculous. It's not, it's not a problem for me. Most of the complaints I saw against the series and other people's reviews are that it doesn't totally kind of explain the mechanism with which, how he makes it to present day. But I really don't think that's quite as important. Obviously, they basically kind of give the Doctor Who version timey-wimey. So I think we're going to learn more about the witchcraft on this show as the show goes on. I don't know, however, if it will end up running for the seven seasons that it called. If you missed that moment at the end of the show, Ichabod basically talks about this seven-year journey that these two characters, obviously he and Abby being represented in that story, go on, culminating eventually in the biblical apocalypse and Judgment Day. So that's basically like, if you watch Supernatural, think of it as like the season five ending where Michael and Lucifer were supposed to do battle. They're basically trying to say that that's kind of like the end point for this series and it, that it's seven years in the future. I think that's a bit of a Babe Ruth moment, kind of calling your shot, seven seasons. I, I don't really see that happening. Most shows nowadays only make it to about five seasons. Even Community basically crawled to five seasons. So I would be surprised, but you never know. It'll be interesting to see. Let me know what you think about the series, though. Do you think it will survive past five seasons? Do you think it'll survive past one season? 
what do you think about all the characters and the idea of the Book of Revelations kind of married to this Sleepy Hollow mythology? I think it's really interesting, so I'm interested to find out. Let me know if you want to keep talking about this too, and I'll do videos for it every week. Subscribe to get those videos. We still have a ton of questions that we need answered, like who are the good witches? Who are the bad witches? What are their roles in all of this? What do the white trees represent? And what is Abby's connection to all this? How did she get pulled into this? But how awesome was that Clancy Brown voiceover at the end? He basically is reading from the actual book of Revelations and it's, he has this really otherworldly voice. You probably recognize him from a lot of voiceover work. Obviously there's so much going on right now that Fall TV is back. Next week we have episode two. We also have Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. premiering. I'll be doing videos for that. We have Arrow, Supernatural. Those will be on Thursday nights. I'll be doing videos for both of those. Then we have Walking Dead. So much TV. I'll probably end up actually having a TV video posting every single night of the week. It's going to be crazy, but it'll be a lot of fun. Right now, you can click here to check out my Legend of Korra Book 2 premiere video, and you can click here to watch my Jon Snow Game of Thrones Season 4 video. I'll be posting that tomorrow, so I'll have the annotation as soon as that video posts. Thank you so much for watching. High five. See you guys tomorrow.